Hi everyone, and welcome back to another Swift video. In this video, we're going to learn a little bit more about loops. In the last video, we covered the very basics of a few loops. Here, we've got an if statement, right? We've also got a for statement right here. For, so, if you haven't watched the last video, here is an if statement. If, you've know, if you know coding, then you're probably going to know this. So, yes, in normal applications, you're going to have to put parentheses right there to specify which statement has to be true in order to, like, uh, execute it. But Swish is different as usual, and you do not have to put parentheses. It's it's optional. Same with semicolons. You can put a semicolon, you don't have to. But if you're going to have two statements in the same line, you're going to have to put a semicolon. But that's going to be very hard for a human to read. So let's go ahead and I'll start with the next statement. Or the next uh, loop. The next one is a switch. It's basically like an embedded if statement. But you have a few cases. So the case is like the statement as asking me if it's true. Then, so it's basically an if statement with a few else ifs and an else. How a switch statement works. You have a few cases. You can have as many as you want. And then you're going to execute some code if that case is true. Otherwise, if none of them are true, then you're going to execute some default code, which is for anything that is not listed in the cases. So let's say we define a number. And we're going to set it to mutable, a variable. And it's going to be an int. And also, you say number equals int. And we're converting something to an int here. Arc for random underscore uniform. Now this is a command that lets you pick numbers randomly out of a set of numbers. And here, what it basically, work, how it works is you type in a number such as three. Let's take three. It's gonna choose a number that's either zero, one, or two. So it's choosing three numbers, but it's starting from zero. And that's the thing about R4 random. So it's, let's say the case is zero. Then you're gonna print zero. And let's say it's not zero. Then we have a few more cases. One. Then print one. And if it's case two, then print two. And we see this break thing right here. Now, we're going to put a break after each case, after you executed the code, because the break will basically tell the compiler, I don't want to run the, I want to get out of the switch statement, we'll run the code out down there. We'll do that for every single one. And one last thing, it's giving us an error because, here because we haven't specified what we want to find uh, control the flow up. So we'll type in number and we'll see what it prints. And we just got one because here up here it says one, right? But let's say we set it to a very big number. It won't do anything. And let's let's actually put something in default saying to large. And it says too large. So that's a good thing. You can set this to any number. If it's not 0, 1, or 2, then it's going to say too large. And here's another lesson to learn. We have learned about commenting stuff. Like, 
like just doing single line ones or doing multiple line ones, which is what I will teach you guys now. Okay, you know, so what you, how you do this, you put a forward slash as usual, but you're gonna put an asterisk. It's gonna comment everything below it. And it stops when you see one of these, an asterisk and then a forward slash. Then everything after this, is not commented out. Comments are basically things that the compiler does not read. Let's move on to the next statement. Here we've got a while. I think you've heard of this before. So while true, let's say. So while something is tr true, then you're gonna run this code continuously. If you just put while true, it's gonna run it forever. You see it's giving us an it just gave us an error there because it because we have because you're you're not running any code a billion times or infinite times. So let's say we want to print hi. You see that number is going up barely a bit, but it eventually stops because this computer cannot handle this. When we try to do while statements, it's gonna really lag up the computer. And how we can get out this while statement? How can we? We'll cover that in the next video. So see you then.